Hello, and welcome to the third video of the computer craft tutorial series. So, in this video, we're finally going to be um, creating our first program. So, let's hop on to the computer. Uh, before I do that, let me stick a disk in here. Now, computer craft uses Lua as its programming language, so that's what we're going to be writing all of our programs in. Now if you type Lua into the command prompt, press enter, we get thrown into the interactive Lua prompt. And this allows you to enter lines of code and press enter and it will execute it for you immediately. Um, so I'll show a quick demonstration of that. Uh, print is a function in Lua that allows you to print text, which we're going to do right now. So as you can see, you say print and then hello world in parentheses um, or quotation marks uh, to show that it's it's meant to be text, plain text. Um, and you see Lua prints hello world after we press enter and uh, the one means that it successfully exited the program. Um, but you don't have to worry about that for now. So right, there's a, a basic example of the Lua prompt, printing hello world. That's actually your very first program. Um, so for the rest, um, the Lua prompt is not that useful in my opinion, because when you're really writing programs, you're going to be doing that in a separate file anyway, rather than in the Lua prompt. The Lua prompt is just for trying things out. Um, if you want to test something like this, this should be three. Well, good, it is three. That makes our life a lot easier. Um, but we'll get to that at a later stage, I guess. Don't worry about that for now. Um, so what we're going to do now is we're going to actually open up a file and write our program in a file instead, rather than mucking about in the Lua prompt, because that's just you know not good enough for us. Um, I believe I press Ctrl T, we can get out of here. Yes, good. Right, so let's. Um, head over to our disk so that if we uh, have the computer destroyed for some reason we don't lose all our progress. So if you remember, uh, use edit to create a new file and I'm going to call this program uh, first. So here's our first program. So just like in the Lua prompt we can type print hello world And we can save the file, and we exit. Now as you can see, there's our file. Now the question is, how on earth do we actually run it? Very easy, you just type in the name of the program, press enter, and there you go. Just as in the Lua prompt, it um, prints hello world, as expected. However here it does not print the one, which uh, keeps things nice and tidy. Um, let's go back in. So, this is a print. Now, what we're gonna, what I'm gonna show you now is how to use variables and what variables are, because that's the main tool you're using when writing a program to deal with data. So, let's say you have a number um, and you want to store it in a certain place so that you can use it later, or you can add to it, subtract to it, and so forth. Um, what you can do is you can define a name for a number. Um, let's say you want to call a number x. Um, what you can do, you can store a number in that variable name, as it were. So you could say x is equal to 10, and everything on the right-hand side will be stored inside um, the variable on the left-hand side of the equal sign. So now x is equal to 10. So what we can do is we can do print x. Um, and notice that I'm not putting quotation marks around this because otherwise it would just print a plain text x. But now instead it's going to be printing the value of x which we set to 10. So let's just show that real quick. See now it prints 10 rather than hello world or x. This is something that's useful. Pressing up on your um, uh, direction keys, you can 
go through the commands that you typed previously. So I press up twice to get back to edit first, press enter. It's quicker than typing it out every time. And it'll save me all the typos as well. Now, we can store um, numbers in variables, but you might say, well, what's the point of that? You might as well just you know, type print 10 instead. Why would you store it into a variable first? Um, the point is that maybe at the end of your program, at some point, you want to do print x, but you don't know what the value of x is going to be yet, because there might be all kinds of stuff going on here, like x is equal to uh, 5 all of a sudden. All of a sudden, x is 5. And maybe you might do after that x is equal to x plus 3. Whoops, 3. And after a while, you're going to completely lose track of what x was going to be. And there might even be um, parts of the code that will be executed or won't be executed, so you have no idea what x is going to be. Um, but you want to print it. So that's why you store it in a variable, so that regardless of whatever happens to x, you're able to print it at the end um, of the program, whatever happens. So in this case, x is 5. That should be 8 by now. Let's see if that's right. Yep. So what you can do, you can also create other variables, of course. y is equal to 8. And you can also go x is equal to x plus, whoops, save, plus 8. Uh, not 8, <laughs> plus y. Let me just fix my keyboard on. Whoa, what happened there? Um, whenever you press Control shift it changes the layout of your keyboard <laughs> and all of a sudden the buttons are not in the right place anymore. Right, anyway. So you can also add variables to each other and you could even add variables to each other to create new variables. Like so. And this is getting a little bit complicated. So let's just delete some things here. Okay. So we've got x plus y is equal to x. Now x was 8, uh, x was 5, y was 8, so that should be 13. After that, you use z is equal to x, which was 13, plus y, which is still 8. So z should be 21. Let's just check that that's correct. and run the program, 21. Excellent. Now you can also do things like um, not only adding but also subtracting using minus. You can multiply using the asterisk and you can divide using the slash, forward slash. So those are the basic operations you can do with numbers and variables. Now what you can also do is store text in variables by using the parentheses like we did when we did our first print command. So we can store hello in the variable text and then we can print text and rather than printing text it will actually print hello and there we go. So I think that brings us to the end of the basics of variables and storing data in them and printing them. Uh, thanks for watching. Next tutorial we will continue our programming skills. And I hope to see you then. Thanks for watching.